Okay, in this video we are going to talk about how to integrate even powers of sine and cosine. So you might have a product of even powers or just one of them that's an even power. Um, and as long as you know a couple of things, these aren't terrible, um, but they're really not that good either. So here are the things that you need to know. So the first thing, you need to know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Um, that's a big deal, but we don't actually use it that way. The way that we actually use it is we rearrange it. So if we see sine squared of something, we're often going to replace it with 1 minus cosine squared of that thing. If we see cosine squared of something, we're often going to replace it with 1 minus sine squared of that thing. Um, okay, so that's one of the things you need to know. A second thing you need to know is that cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So that's going to come up a lot. But we don't actually use it that way. We actually rearrange it and solve for cosine squared. We get cosine squared of something is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2 times that thing all over 2. And then you might also run into um, cosine squared, uh, sorry, cosine of 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And again, we rearrange this and solve for sine squared. So sine squared is uh, 1 minus cosine of 2x over 2. Okay, so those are the things we need to know. And let's see how we can use them. So here's an example. We have the integral of sine squared of 3x dx. So we're going to immediately replace sine squared with uh, the cosine equivalent. So it's going to be 1 minus cosine of it's 2 times the thing. So 2 times 3x. And then that's all over 2. And then there's a dx. So this integral you can break into two integrals, both of which you can kind of just do uh, pretty much by looking at them. And that's a good thing. You want to get to the point where you can do these kinds of integrals just by looking. You don't want to have to show the u substitution every single time. It's not bad to do that, but you don't really want to have to. So the integral of 1 half dx is just 1 half x. And then the integral of this, it's going to be, so we'll keep the negative 1 half. Um, we're going to get a 1 sixth. And then a integral of cosine is sine, and then of 6x. And then there's going to be a plus c. And then we can clean this up. So that's a, a basic example of how these things work. Uh, the next one is a common example, but it's not very basic. So let's take a look. So we have the integral of sine to the fourth of 4x times cosine squared of 4x and then dx. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is everywhere we see a sine squared or a cosine squared, we're going to replace it with those cosine of 2x formulas. Um, so it'll be the integral of sine to the fourth is sine squared squared. So, parenthesis, it's going to be 1 minus cosine of 2 times the thing, and the thing in this case is 4x. And then that's all over 2, so that's sine squared of 4x, and then I need to square that to get up to sine to the fourth. And then we do the same sort of thing for cosine, so it's going to be 1 plus cosine of 2 times the thing, which is 4x. And then all over 2, and then there'll be a dx. So um, I can take out a 1 eighth, right, because I have 1 half squared in the first fraction, and then I have 1 half, so 1 eighth um, integral. And uh, I need to expand the quantity 1 minus cosine of 8x squared and 1 plus cosine of 8x. So uh, this is what we have currently. So these are kind of the leftovers. We're just rewriting it. Haven't actually done any calculus yet. Okay, um, I need to expand that thing. So what I do is I look at that as 1 minus u, the quantity squared, times 1 plus u. And the way that I personally expand that is I like to do 1 minus u times 1 plus u, which gives me uh, a 1 minus u left over. And then 1 minus u times 1 plus u is 1 minus u squared. And then if we expand this, we get uh, 1 minus u minus u squared plus u cubed. And so now I know u is equal to cosine of 8x. So I can rewrite my integral. So I'm just rewriting it according to that. Fun little fact, uh, the first time I made this video, I put pluses instead of minuses, and I got it entirely wrong. It took me like two hours to figure out what I had done, so that was horrible. So here we go. Um, we have this, and now uh, there's I see three things that I need to do. Uh, this integral, I can actually just do by looking. It's really similar to the previous problem. Um, this integral, it's cosine squared, so I'm going to use the cosine of 2a formula on that. And then this integral, um, I have an odd power of cosine, so what I'm going to do is save one of the cosines and change cosine squared into 
1 minus sine squared. So three separate things I'm going to do. So let's see. The first one I just wanted to integrate. So it's going to be 1 half. The integral of 1 is x. Uh, 1 eighth, rather. The integral of 1 is x um, minus 1 eighth because I'm still distributing 1 eighth all the way through. That's a mistake you might accidentally make. Um, so it's minus 1 eighth. Uh, to integrate cosine of 8x, I need uh, 1 eighth. And then the integral of cosine is sine, and it's of 8x. So now I'll have minus 1 eighth, because that's still there. I'm going to change cosine squared of 8x into, so I'm going to use the cosine of 2a formula. So it's 1 plus cosine of 2 times whatever the thing is, the thing is 8x, and then that's all over 2, and then a dx. And then there's going to be a plus 1 eighth, because I'm still distributing all the way through. Um, I'm going to take one of the, the cosine squared, so I'm breaking cosine cubed into cosine squared times cosine. Cosine squared I'm going to replace with 1 minus sine squared of the thing, which is 8x. And then I still have a cosine of 8x, which is good because that's kind of like a u substitution type thing, and then a dx. Okay, so uh, let's see what we have so far. We have 1 eighth x minus 1 64th sine of 8x. Um, then I have a negative 1 eighth, and I'm going to pull out a 1 half here. So I got minus 1 eighth, pull out 1 half, and then I have uh, the integral of 1 plus cosine of 16x. So I'm just going to integrate that. So the integral of 1 is x. The integral of cosine of 16x, I need a plus 1 16th, and then the integral of cosine is sine of 16x. Um, and let's close that. We got plus. There's still this 1 eighth here. So if I distribute the cosine of 8x, uh, I need to integrate cosine of 8x minus sine squared of 8x times cosine of 8x. So that's two separate integrals that I'll deal with. So right now I'm integrating cosine of 8x. So I need a 1 eighth. And then uh, the integral of cosine is sine of 8x. And then it's, uh, I'm going to have a, so I'm, now I'm integrating negative sine squared of 8x times cosine of 8x. But there's still that 1 eighth, so I'm going to have a minus 1 eighth. And then it's sine squared of 8x cosine of 8x. So this is kind of a perfect u substitution. So um, I need a 1 eighth. I need a one-third to reverse the power rule. So the one-eighth is kind of reversing the chain rule. The one-third is reversing the power rule. And then I'll get sine cubed of 8x. And then don't forget plus c. OK, so now i got to simplify this. I'm essentially done. I'm just trying to simplify at this point. So I don't know. Let's go through this. So I'm just going to go through and clean everything up. So multiply what I can multiply, distribute what I can distribute, and see what happens. So far, I have this. It's got a lot of parts. But you can already see I have a 1 eighth x and a minus 1 16th x. Um, so those are going to combine. I've got a minus 1 64th sine of 8x and a plus 1 64th sine of 8x. So that's good. Those are going to cancel. And then I've got what's left over. OK, so let's simplify this. Equal. So the things that are just x are 1 eighth x and minus 1 16th x combined to just 1 16th x. The sine of 8x terms actually just cancel out because they're equal but opposite. Um, nothing goes with the sine of 16x, so that's still there. And nothing goes with this sine cube term, so that's still there. And plus c is still there. All right, so that's my answer. And what is that the answer to? It's the answer to this integral. So we were doing all of this to try to find the antiderivative of sine to the fourth of 4x times cosine squared of 4x, and then dx. Okay, so that's what we were doing. So after I got the answer, I wanted to check it. So what I did was I popped over to Wolfram Alpha and I typed in integral. And you can see that the answer it gives is definitely not what I got. But there's a lot of trig involved, so trig identities and trig formulas and whatever. So I thought, let's try to just simplify that. So I asked uh, Wolfram Alpha to simplify the thing that it got as the integral. And it gave me this, which I don't think is really simpler. Um, so then I thought, well, what if I take my answer and find the derivative of it? So I asked it to do that. I gave it my thing, said take the derivative of it. It gave me this, which is also not what I got. 
But in this case, when I asked it to simplify, it actually simplified down to sine to the fourth 4x four times cosine squared of 4x, which is what I was hoping it would. So it actually checked out. Um, so that's all you need to do for these. You got to remember your cosine of 2x formulas. You got to remember sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then you just have to be really neat and organized and remember to distribute where you need to distribute. Um, I hope this was helpful and good luck.